you know, Marty, when I see him getting ready to go each spring, something seems to get right behind my shoulder blades and start a punch. 1,600 miles across mountains, prairies, and rivers to California. Have you seen anything of Clint Belmont? Oh, <laughs> and it's most 10 o'clock. <laughs> what time did you say it was? Say, how did you get in there? It ain't possible the marsh actually done it already. Say, what in blazes are you fellas talking about? I, uh, what, uh, what are you doing in that jail? And how come you can get out so easy? Things were so noisy around town last night, I... I thought I'd try and catch up on a little sleep in the jail here. Say, listen. I Wait till you hear what the marshal said. Marshal, I'm proud of you. You was plum grand last night. I was kind of drunk last night. Hey, just what did I say? Why, you wasn't so drunk you don't remember saying in front of everybody, that you would have that fire-eating Clint Bellamet clapped into jail before 10 o'clock this morning? Say, what wouldn't the marshal give if he hadn't made that remark, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Clint Bellamet would make about two mouthfuls of him. And I want to say right here and now that I don't believe there's an officer of the law in the state of Missouri who'd have nerve enough to say that and do it. Oh. <laughs> Fill him up again, Pete. <laughs> Maybe he heard what I said and lit out. Ever had any heart failure in your family? Not that I know of. Then turn around. this over. Now, 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 don't argue with him, Marsh. Lock him up. Do your duty, Now, I got him his liver. It was the polka dot saloon and the, the last chance, the golden rule bar, huh? Oh, no. Well, it must have been the happy old dance hall. Now, you know me, Bill, and you know if I can get a couple of drinks of good liquor in me, I can recollect to remember just what was, what happened. It's a good idea. You know, you got to admit, it's only fair that you should serve anyway, at least 30 days. What's going on? Oh, that that what you go in with a little. I'm not doing it. 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 I'm Whoa! Hey, please, will you tell me where the freight wagon stopped from? <laughs> Do you want to say goodbye to your sweetheart? No. I'm going to take my freight with them to California. Does a girl like you think she can drive 1,600 miles? Why not? A man like my great-grandfather came to this country with Lafayette. Gosh. That's a long, hard trip, ma'am. You've taken on yourself. Oh, you think it is too hard for me? Sure it is. Ask them two scouts what they think your chances are. If I could only think clearly. We just got to get him loose somehow. Oh, excuse me. Are you the scouts for the big freight train? Uh-huh. Oh, don't bother us about them freighters. But I must go with that train. All right, go ahead. 
Oh, but those people there, they tell me if the big scouts say a good word for me. We ain't got nothing to do with it. Guys, we're busy. A partner around in there is in an awful scrape. Put them hands up now, Clint. Don't give in, Marshal. Oh, my Never your duty, Marshal. Up with them. The poor boy. What has he done? Oh, what? nothing much, miss, only... They're gonna hang him. Hang him? But why? What has he done? Nothing. He's plumb innocent. But he's just young, fun-loving, and full of pranks. Oh, this is terrible. I know. But you can save him. Me? And how? Did I hear you say you wanted to go with them fellas? Yes, certainly. Well, if you want us to help you, and you want to save that young man, just you follow my lead. Oh, if ever there was an angel sent from heaven, you're it. Do your duty, Marsh, and quit your shilly shally. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, here, you suppose to be marching to this village. All you got to do is go in. Now, look here, Clint. You've got to come with me. Oh! Lest <laughs> you separate apart what the Almighty has joined us under. <laughs> what are you talking about? Hold on, citizens! If you only knew how Jim Bridger and me, as guardians of this young man, have gone down on our knees night after night and prayed that he put an end to all this skylarking and scallyhooting. Now look oh, here, come to your point. Shooks! When you would know how glad we was to have this proof that he'd taken heed to our prudence, that he decided to turn over a new leaf and also to uh, turn over a new leaf. Hey, what is this? <laughs> What's he got to do with it? Yes! Yes! Last night, and the full moon, Clint Belmont and this beautiful little girl was joined together in matrimony as man and husband. Oh, come on. Oh, you old liar. You just ask him if he ain't a bridegroom. Ask him. Did you miss me, sweetheart? So much, Dolly. Oh, folks, look at that. Look at that. Are you going to tear apart two loving hearts that ain't hardly had a chance to beat as one? Why, then? is just on the brink of life's meaning. Uh, who, who, who could be skunk enough to rip and render them two besunder? Are you finished? <laughs> <laughs> well, now look at this fine boy. This fine laddie. His feet are now in the right direction. Oh, Marsh. Marsh, you couldn't be so cruel, so inhuman. And so, so, so mangy. Wants to throw him into the penny, penny, into jail, where a lot of hardened criminals and drunkards would fill his head with a lot of bad notions. Uh, who could be uh, 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 good enough to, to, to do what he says? Chatterbox. <laughs> well, now. Now, look at that lovely little lassie. Oh, folks. Can you find it in your hearts to trample on her happiness afore it's had time to... time to... to... to get to going? Fellow citizens, if you can call me soft-hearted and a derelict in my duty, Remove me from office, if you will, and pin my badge on a tougher man. <laughs> but my heart won't let me go no further with this. 
Marsh, you got a heart full to overflowing. We all got You're all right, Marsh. Clint, my boy, you've gone and done a mighty sensible thing. And you'll promise me I know. Don't never raise no more net around this here town, will you? I have done it good, huh? Marvelous, miss. Never seen a better play actress than you is, even in Omaha. <laughs> Thank you. Now, what train? Right on the edge of town. You can't miss it. Oh, but you don't forget your promise. You get your outfit in line with them others, and don't you say nothing to nobody. We'll fix everything. Go on. Good. Say, what lunatic ticket asylum did she escape from? Oh, a little idea of mine to get you out of that hole you was in. Idea yours. That would have to go through with the thing if she wanted to join them fighters. Is she going all the way to Sacramento with us? Watch what she's figured on. Well, come on then. What are we waiting here for? Mm. Now look here, young Mr. Tucky Cook. You've been playing in high, white, and handsome long enough. And someday, one of them fancy hussies is going to get her talons into you and never let go. Well, you, you, you'll end up with a bear trap across your fetlocks or swinging a baby crib. Not me. The woman who can hook me into a mariner ain't been born yet. <laughs> Mr. Tusky. Who is she with? Oh, I don't know. I never seen her before. Oh. oh. Hello. Where have you been? Me? Why? Those cows, they tell me that a woman alone will be sent back home. That's true. Yeah, yes, that's so. Uh -huh. You're not that friend. Are uh, you? Trail bringing us meat, finding water. I'll and attend to everything. Couch. to be a heap more pleasant with you along. <laughs> Tell me, what do people do at night? Do they sing or uh, play music? Huh? Yeah. Single men sit around a fire and sing and tell lies. <laughs> Married folks mostly just have their supper and uh, go to bed. Ah, so? Being as we're married, we ought to get better acquainted. But holding hands is all right, ain't it? We're married. Yes, I understand, but now is no need to fool ourselves. Then uh, you ain't intending to... Uh, One moment, my friend. Just exactly. What do you mean? Well, it was me that made it possible for you to go on this trip, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, I'm most grateful, but... And if uh, Couch should find out that we're not married... Well, you know what they told you about being sent back, so... Uh, so, you mean unless well, I... Well, that shouldn't be such a hard choice for you to make. Get 
kiss the bride. Huh? <laughs> oh, stop bothering him. How'd you like to be a bride and be bothered all night? <laughs> Look at him. Laughing it up like as if it was gooseberry jam. When I think of him eating hog meat for his supper. Yeah, and a drinking of elderberry wine. And afterwards, when we're a working. Twin. <laughs> well, I told one of you two fellas to go out and round up them stray mules. Why not have Clint do it? He's the youngest. He's a bridegroom. Don't you think he's entitled to his honeymoon? Yeah, I should think even you would know enough for that. Go on now, hurry up and get them mules before they get halfway back to Independence. Wait a minute, you. I've had about enough of this. Listen, coach. What would you say if I told you that them two ain't married at all, huh? What? what? Uh, the joke's gone far enough. I can't stand that, that string being deceiving a fine man like you no longer. What's that? Well, it was like this. Clint got into some kind of a scrape in independence, and the marshal was going to put him in the, uh, the, the in jail. What? And... His life was not in danger? Shucks, no, miss. That was just a lot of scalahootin' ruckus. Nothing into it. Anyway, this young girl was willing to pretend to be Clint's bride, so the marshal let him off, huh? No use of the chivalry now. Oh, oh, <laughs> Mr. Carl, you're not going to send me back. Send you back, ma'am? Why should I? Oh. Now, let me make sure of something. If I was, if I was not married, if I was all alone, would you stop me from coming? Why, no. Not if your outfit's in good shape. Sure was a surprise to me. I thought the couch... You... you thought what? But anyhow, it was only a joke. Hmm, I see. A joke, huh? You make a fool of me to let me think I... I saved your life. You think that I'm bad? That you dare to hold me so cheap as you as a woman? Well, let me tell you something. For the rest of this journey, you keep away from me, you understand? No, me the fuck is with us twice with the salad if you do the Ha ha ha! There you are, Mr. Turkey Coxy. Maybe you'd like to do some mule hunting after all, eh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Missy, I'm glad you gave it to him. Oh, He's only. You, you are just as much to blame. Me? Go ahead, boys. What? You explain it to her. You're so much smarter than me. But wait a minute. What you hear, that? you hear what I tell him. I just think the same from you two fools. Now get out! Oh, but I'm get not out! Oh, you could show the SL if I was a fellow! Oh, I'll be on to the show! Jump, 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 jump! the goal since four o'clock in the morning. Oh. Get up, Jim. You can't get no hot fiddles until we come on wood to cook it with. Oh, for land sakes, Jane, can't you miss one of them bumps? Well, why don't you get out and walk? Be a new experience for you. God darn it, and we throw them together. Huh? He's gone back to her for more. Now that shows he's kind of smitten by her, don't it? Still mad? Looking kind of tired. Well, we just gotta get rid of her. You got a long drive ahead of you. You better let me drive your outfit for a while. If I need help from anybody, you... You will be the last one I will ask. All right, miss. The stagecoach! Hey! Stagecoach! 
Didn't figure on them so soon. this side the post. They won't jump a big outfit like this, will they? Can't never tell. Think we ought to push on to the post? Cavalry. <laughs> Sailor escort us in. Glad to see you. What's happened? I won't jump the mail stage. I thought you knew it. You thought we knew? Why, yes. Didn't you come out to escort us back to the post? We're on our way to the war. President Lincoln has sent for all the frontier troops. You mean to say there ain't no more troops at the post? As far as I know, we're the last company between here and Santa Fe. Oh, then you ain't helping us. Sorry, we're joining Grant's army at Vicksburg. What does Lincoln and the government think they're doing? Stripping this Western territory of protection. Yeah, freight and supplies have got to go on, war or no war. Maybe you haven't heard that the Confederates got pretty near to Washington. No, we've been too busy out here to pay any attention to that picayune squabble back east. Hey, Jim, maybe this is old chance. Chance? Uh. Hi, just a minute. Look here, coach. Engines is going to be mighty dangerous from now on. Why don't you send the women folk back with the soldiers, huh? If they want to go, you'll escort them as far as independence, won't you? Mm, I can do that, yes. Bill Jackson, you got fox blood into you somewheres. Shut up. Where Tom goes, I go. If he gets into trouble, I get in it with him. Well, how about her? She ain't got nobody belongs to her in this here outfit. That's right. Send me back? No, I would not go back. They are not afraid to go on, neither am I. I said I would go to Sacramento and I'm going on. Oh, close me a sticking couch. What do you think we are? You got to get up and get to you. Now what are we going to do? Couch? See, I don't think your train ought to risk it. Folks in Sacramento are expecting it. You need any ammunition? Got plenty. Well, good luck to you. We've been milling around a little. Well, they took the stage horses with them. The rest of the hoof prints was unsured. Signs look like as if they went southeast, about 50 in the band. That little band wouldn't try to jump this outfit, would they? Uh, that may have only been a part of a big band, see? Suppose we prowl around and find out if they're joining up with, with other bands. You think it'd be safe to bed down here? 
Sure, engines won't jump us before dawn. Good. You better get started. Come on, man. All right, men. Let's curl up our wagons and bed down here for the night. Here we go. Come on. You ain't got no need of worrying. I understand Indians ain't got no use for blondes, no way. Oh, shut up, will you? You ain't so funny. <laughs> What's that? Well, it must be them. Well? Well, what did you find out? Are we safe here? The Indians have rode off, ain't they? Yes. So they can band together with more of them for an attack on us. They were signaling. You better break up camp right now. Yeah, and try to get to the post. Indians won't strike before dawn. We'll leave the campfires burning so they'll think we're still here. You're in an old fired hurry to get to the post, ain't you? That's the reason you kept back word about the wood being here. So as you can make us get to where you can do some more of your drinking and carousing. Hold on. When I tell you to get to going, they know what they're talking about. I'll get your stock hitched up. And don't forget to throw ashes on them graves. And then drive your wagons across them like I told you. What's that? What? That? Oh, that? That's nothing, just a couple of scalps. Why, you... He swore he's going to have a hundred of them by the time he's 70. <laughs> you attacked the engine? Yeah, they had them uh, stagecoach horses with them. You run that risk? No, oh, no, coach. There was only 10 or 12 men in the room with them horses. You jeopardized the lives of everyone in this outfit. For six worthless horses? Worthless horses? They'll be worth $40 a piece to us when we get to Sacramento. Well, we're thinking about yourselves. Hi. Oh, oh, coach, no. Here. Look here. Come on. Hello there. Got a toothache? If you have, why, uh, Seth can take it out for you with his pliers. <laughs> He's kind of handy with things like that. Used to be a blacksmith. Oh, no. Well, then. I'm afraid. I thought it was funny you wasn't scared before. What did you start for California for, anyway? Alone. I do not start alone. Who? I start together with my father. But oh. on our way from Vincennes, he goes into his bed. For five weeks I watch, but he died. I'm sorry. But he said to me before, go on. I guess he didn't know what going on would mean. No, he do not know. I hear there are lots of French people in Indiana? Yes, we are all French at Vincennes. I know you've had a tough time, and I hope it's all behind you when you get out to California. I hope so. But now... <laughs> oh, I'm a big... Uh, how you say? Turkey? Turkey? I don't know what you're aiming at. Yes, because I have the fear. I'm stupid. I'm Turkey. Turkey? Yes, when a woman make herself silly and... How you say it? Uh, uh, oh, goose, maybe. Hmm? <laughs> That's it. Goose? Yeah. But you're not a goose. No? You're as brave as anybody. Most of us are as shaky as you are tonight. And uh, us men get our courage out of bottles. and All the other women have somebody to lean on. But you've got nobody. That's why you come and talk to me. So I can lean on you a little while. Well, maybe. Anyhow, I, I didn't come over because I thought you was good and mad at me. I'm not mad now. Well then, don't be scared anymore. We're moving to the post under cover of night. You'll be all right. I'm all right now. <laughs> and I will not be afraid again, I promise. How do you say when you mean something very much? Shake. Hey, Barlow! Here's a 
since the wagon train got reined in. Uh, like a lot of sailors getting in the port, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a lot of freight outfits bogged down in this post. Well, a bottle of whiskey will cost you a barrel of flour. Why, that's the same as robbing a man. It suits me, brother. You can take it or leave. Well, all right. Jerry, a bottle of bourbon. Do you see what I see? Jeff! Jeff Muppet, your gorilla! Jeff, you old son of a rattlesnake! Howdy, Jim! And Bill Jackson! Yeah. <laughs> Tell me, what are you doing in this skunk hole? Still scout? Scout? Not me. I'm working for the railroad. Railroad? Well, well, what railroad? The Atchison, Topeka, Santa Fe. Putting a railroad through when they can't hardly get a wagon? Yeah, they give up that fool idea way back in 58. Well, it's on again. These two fellas with me are surveying it now. Say, in a few years, they won't need no scouts. They'll always need scouts. Come on, son of a bitch. Come on, How about it? The stock's in fine shape. We can travel all right if you want to. But I'd rather wait a couple of days. The ground's still pretty spongy. Ordinarily, I would, Clint. But I got to get these hob-raised independents out here before they all go plumb loco. Oh, why don't you pull out without them independents? No account drunken bunch of cattle, anyhow. Can't do that. I need them for protection against the engine. You got 18 company wagons, ain't you? Yes. Nothing out there but small bands of engines now. But if they ever find out the soldiers is gone, they're going to band together in one big war party. Better leave while they're still scattered. How do you know so much about it? I was out there in the Indian country about two months ago with an immigrant train that was massacred by the Kiowa. But you got away. Yeah. But I was the only one. They jumped us because we only had six outfits. But they ain't going to start no trouble with 18 outfits. I still wouldn't favor splitting the train. The couch. I've about come to the end of my tether. We've got to get out of here. Mr. Couch, why can't we leave this terrible place? Everybody has lost their minds. Stupid people gambling and drinking, fighting. I know, ma'am, but I ain't got any control over these independent freighters. Oh, but look at this poor woman. Her husband is drunk, playing cards, got me all their goods away. Another man has lost his own wagon. I'm just as anxious to go as you are, ma'am. But I can't until I round up these independents. I'll tell you one way you can round them up. How? You've got enough company drivers that ain't too drunk or too sober to fight. You've got me and Bridger and Jackson. You say the word and we'll handle them. My gosh, that's a good idea. Abe, gather up your drivers. Wait, have them hook up their teams so when we get them rounded up, we can put them in the wagons and get started pronto. That'll mean hitching up the independent teams that's too. That's right. Don't you worry, Mr. Couch. Us women folks will tend to that. My girls will pitch in and help, too. Them with their sheltered lives. Time they had a few calluses on their hands. They're getting plump demoralized. <laughs> I'll uh, get a hold of Bridger and Jackson. Oh. All right. Well, if it was my husband, he would find out. Wingate, Otoa. <laughs> what is he saying? They want to know if they can buy our fire engine to make fire water. Oh. Also, look at her. A wiggling and a pouting and a buttoning up of that rubber moth of hern. 
Just like a snake are putting a spell on a bird. Boo. If he ain't been himself for the last three days, I've been watching him pretty close. Yesterday, he only had 11 drinks. And he's been a-working, too. But doing things for couch he don't have to do. She's got him all right. Yeah. Let's get drunk. Well, let's try anyway. Hey, give us a bottle of that whiskey. No, no, I'll get you a bottle of 20-year-old Kentucky bourbon. No, no, we'll drink this barn whiskey. It's got more oomph to it. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, let her have it. You mean you'd see that boy that we learned to shoot straight, to ride straight, to drink straight liquor, throw himself away on a... a, a no, no, no. Now, she ain't no better nor no worse than any other female. Uh, she looks puny and picked to me. I once knew a man settled down with one of them foreign women. Their babies was all dwarfs. Now, now, don't you go worrying in your head about no babies. <laughs> this marriage ain't going to last that long. No, I don't know. She's one of them kind that'll hang on like grim death to what she wants. Oh, uh, well, he, he'll get over it just the same as he done the measles. Mm, love's a funny thing. I remember once I was awful fond of a little kickapoo Indian girl, and <laughs> I don't know, but for some reason or other, I kind of appealed to her. <laughs> uh, I might have known you wouldn't understand anything tender-like. You haven't got any romance in you. A <laughs> kickapoo! Uh, Say, I've been looking for you. <clears throat> On Snake River will be just about right for trapping by the time we get there. You're right. And us two could skin off about a thousand pelts apiece. Mm -hmm. And what am I going to be doing? You, <laughs> you'll be married and settle down. We won't have to bother with you no more. Ought to be a fancy market for pelts in Frisco, huh? Mm-hmm. So you two are going trapping, huh? Got any objections? Well, what about me? <laughs> now, wait a minute. <laughs> Who said I was getting married? Oh, she's got you hooked. Uh, yeah, you thought you knowed it all. But you showed that you don't know nothing. Not where women's concerned, <laughs> anyway. Ooh. Cooney and tricky, look out. Yeah. Why was she so willing to say she was married to you back there in Independence? You're just as green as a sapling about the designing ways of women folk. Yeah. You was an easy victim. Yeah, but she didn't pull no wool over our eyes. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute. Maybe you've done me a favor here. I admit I was beginning to like her a lot. But a Marion straight, I never figured on that. And I guess that's maybe where you're right again. She did all along. <laughs> hey, bring some of that liquor over here. <laughs> Trying to get me into a corral tied to her apron string. So I'll become one of them tidied up men, rocking in front of a stove with pipe ashes all down the front of me and my hands all tangled up in the skein of knitting wool. <laughs> <laughs> Set that down, it ain't got long to live. Do you really think you've got a chance to shake her off? A dropper? Same as you've done all the rest of them? Here's hoping she finds a husband somewhere else. Amen! <laughs> hey, <man. laughs> That's enough for you. Let go my arm! The train's moving out. 
Couch has given us orders. Let him go. I don't care anything if you are. Come on, you get up. Get in there and give him plenty. Come on, get in there and clean him up. I'll tell you what I'll do, Jim. I'll trust you to hold this mug of liquor steady on your head. Uh, how about me trusting you to shoot straight? You, know, you don't have to worry about that. All right, let's get our old shooting irons. Oh, what a beautiful fight. I oh, wish we was in it. <laughs> oh, I meant to tell you, we're supposed to be. What? We are in it. Wait, wait a minute. Which side are we supposed to be on? What difference does that make? None. <laughs> leave you behind, did you? Sweetheart? Boys, help you set her up? No. We'll make camp here. We'll set her up in the morning. Well, we need some feed. I'll go make a snow plow and uncover some of this bunch grass. All right. Two shouldn't get married? No. Oh, go ahead, no, Crouch. no, go on. Do you know what you're doing? We, we do. do. Join hands. You'd better join both of them. You want to make this binding. All right. Now you're man and wife. Do I get to kiss the bride? <laughs> hey. 
It's really necessary for us to get married. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why, you see? Even when I'm willing to get spliced in matrimony, I don't seem to get nowhere with them. <laughs> I guess he's cured of her. If he was in love, he wouldn't have no appetite like that. Do we have to go up them? Yep. The scouts say there's a pass over there where we can get through. But if there is one, it's a laying up yonder in that saddle, Summers. Yes, and there's liable to be a lot of deep snow drifts on the other side. It sure looks like mighty ticklish going. Yola! <laughs> Nothing funny about that. Well, let's hitch up and get going anyway. Had it easy compared to this. Shot us some fresh meat. Well, if they ain't got nothing to say for themselves, they know they ain't a bit of use to us. Yeah. My coach. That there deer was killed by Kiowas. Look. Kiowa moccasin tracks all around them. Plains engines. Mm. Way off their regular territory. Still following us. Oh, maybe just a hunting party. Uh, did you ever hear of Kiowas traveling so far to hunt just game? Well, no. Better double your night guard. There's something funny about this. All right. I'll have that done. I wonder if there was any reason why he was the only survivor of that there massacre. I was just wondering the same thing myself. What men love, I don't think. You've got to baby them and honey them and butter them on both sides. I am French, and I have known all what you say since I was so high. What's the good of knowing if you don't use it? Perhaps you're right. Well, you can risk a couple of prapses on it.
Yes, ma'am. You'll excuse me not seeing you sooner. <laughs> Will you tell that scout that I need his help? Yes. Monsour. Monsour. Francie says she wants you to come over there and fix something gone wrong with her outfit. Tell her I'm too busy. <laughs> come on, let's go tell her, Jim. <laughs> oh. Clint. Clint Belmont says for me to tell you He's too busy a man to fetch and carry at your beck and call. Of course, if there's anything we can do to help you, if anything's gone wrong. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> Get out. Over my right there, miss. Yeah, hey, miss. No, I'm not. Take it easy. Clint ain't come near us all day. He's a scared to fate. Come on, that, that ain't no nursing bottle. <laughs> Love song is just sickening. Come on. You don't hold with all this talk, do you, Cal? Sure, don't fool yourself. Steam roads will be here before you know it. Across the desert and over the mountain? Look what's going on over the Oregon route. Central Pacific and Union Pacific will be joining up in Utah in a few years. And I think you're right. And I'll bet they'll be cutting fracks right through where we're standing now. Yes, sir, boys. The old time west is past. That's right. Who and wants I a drink? Huh? The man what don't drink with us is a double-bladed skunk. Mona? Ah. Huh? Uh, do you want to fight? Oh, shut up, Jackson. You're drunk. I ain't too drunk to bust you in the nose. Easy, boys. Easy. <laughs> easy. I know why them two are so full of fighting liquor. Their day's about over. Whose days is over, huh? What you fellas gonna do when the railroad comes through? They'll be scouting engines down the track. <laughs> Chasing bufflers off the right of way. <laughs> you wanna fight? Let him talk, Jim. They'll go too far. Now, Clint's got the right idea. 
He's got himself a beautiful wife, and he'll fit in with those new times all right. But them two desert rats. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, you squint-eyed swain. I can lick any man in this south. Oh, no, wait, no, wait, that's all right, boy. Run along, run along. They're only fun and fun. I don't like that kind of fun. Little French hussy. You will see one box of linen that all the gold in California could not buy. Since I'm a little girl, I've been putting fine pieces in that box for when I'm married. What? Yes, it is a custom with French people. And when we are married and have our own house, you will be proud of the fine tablecloth and the serviette. The what? Yes, you know, the napkin that I have embroidered with my own hands. I ain't never sat down to a table all cluttered up like that. And I don't know as I'd like to, either. <laughs> but, darling, not always. You will be sit here like this, with the coffee here, and the plate here, and everything cooking like here, with funny people. No. <laughs> we will have a uh, tova And there will be wine at the table. And in the evening, when you come back from work, what kind of work? Oh, I don't know, darling. But you will find some real work so you can come home every night. You mean I'd have to give up scouting? What? You will leave me for this? To go and come with those old men on the wagons? Why not? That's all I know how to do. And those old men are aiming to make as good a scout of me as they are. And they don't come any better. Oh, then, if this is your life, you do not want me. Wait a minute. I don't say that. What I say is that I don't see how I'm going to fit into the picture you've got in your mind. Working regular, eating off of tablecloths and tying a napkin around my neck like a baby. I've always been free, and I don't know as... I'd like a woman to tell me this here and that there. I ain't never been tied down to nothing. Oh, Oh, how stupid I was. I thought you loved me. I thought you once married me and be happy with me. And all what you want is this, to ride, to drink whiskey and make love to some other girl, then be killed by the Indians. Well, all that's being free anyhow. It's my nature to be free. So then, I... I have this to say to you. You are free. You are very free. Do anything you like, but never speak to me again. Now, wait a minute. Oh, go. Let's go and give her our congratulations, huh? That's a good idea. Come on, Jim. The trouble with you, Jim, is your, your drink. Yeah, yeah, I know. Oh. Well, Missy, you, you got him. Yeah. Hooked and ready to land. Well, I hope you're satisfied. You made a fine house dog out of a man. Huh. You are congratulating me, eh? Huh? Well, certainly. We're good sports. Yeah, that's a lie. Well, I don't want him. You understand? What's that? I say I'm rid of him. You, rid of him? You, you mean you've turned him down? I did. You, you, you don't love him? Love him? Yes, I do. I love him as much as you. I was ready to work for him, to bear him children, and make him a real home. I would have made something out of your Clint Belmont. And Dan is much more than you can say. What's that? What have you ever done for him, huh? Why, we raised that oh, boy. Wait, for... wait, for what? To be like you all the rest of his life, just a drunken, miserable, selfish pig. But wait, wait a sir. <laughs> huh. mm. Damn little fool. Spitfire. <laughs> Was, uh, tell me, Jim. When she was garbing away there, did she say something about having thrown Clint down? 
Seems like as if she did. Let's go tell him how lucky he is. All right. This horse is gone. He's a trailing engine. Alone. Burn. Oh. They've been traveling since 2 o'clock this morning to dodge the heat. Must be getting near the river by now. Yeah. I will jump them when I get my cross. You understand? You tell them. Uh, he's been traveling in a straight line all night. Now are you satisfied that he ain't trailing no Indians, huh? He's running away all right. But why? Oh, uh, Jim, I've been kind of thinking. Do you suppose there's anything in what that girl said last night, huh? Uh, I've been thinking too. Oh, come on. Have your laugh. That's what you followed me for. You told me a gal would get a hold of me someday, and you was right. Now laugh, dog, do you? But... She's got me so I can't even look at her without, without wanting to grab her in my arm. That's why I'm running away from her. So that I can beat it. And when I meet up here in Sacramento, I'll have it beat. But she loves you. I know that. You mean that you're running away from her because you love her too? Yes. Why run away? Well, I've been thinking. She's right. I ain't good enough for her. I wouldn't make her or any gal a fit husband. No. You know, Sonny, what she's been a-blaming you for, she'd have been much righter to blame us about. Mm-hmm. Me and Jim ain't treated you right. We've been lying to you. The railroad is coming. Freighters have only got a little while longer. Oh, times is changing. You'd better change, too. You mean to say she's reformed you? We ain't a talking about us. Now, you'd better go back. We can't do no more for you, boy, and she can. Mm-hmm. That's another place we went wrong. She's all right. And you're asking me to go back? It's the best thing for you, boy. Well, what are you going to do? No, oh, never mind about us. Hmm. That's funny, you asking me to turn you down. After the way you cared for me when I was young and weak, Doc. Ah. So now that you're weak and old. Old, oh, weak? What? Why, you old? You insolent young puppy. Oh. I can still wreck you. I beat you up. Uh, uh, <laughs> kick that grin off your face. Put him down. Get him down. Hey, hey I'll kick that grin off your face, will you? Have you got enough? Go on, get up. Let's got enough. Wait a minute. Engine. Of the river. 
Like I told you, Mr. Tuckico. You tend to your own shoe. <laughs> I can get more than you two old cripples put together. Yeah? Well, you cripple them, Sonny, and we'll finish them for you. <laughs> <laughs> to be the sole survivor of another massacre. Yeah. <laughs> the engines want to catch us while we're split by the river. If we can only get together on the other side, we got a chance. Frank, you see to getting the stock across. Jim and me will take some men and hold them off here as long as we can to cover the crossing. See? Where's the girl? Here's the car. Come on.
There's one massacre you ain't survived. Whoever believeth on me shall never die. Goldie, you want to look your best for these men, folks? Me and Eddie get married in Sacramento tomorrow. And me and Nathaniel's thinking of doing the same thing. <laughs> get back in that wagon. Get back. Get back. <laughs> it was not my intention to come all the way out here to open up a matrimonial agency. <laughs> This will make the third sale I've made since we struck California. 
Seth Higgins bought one of them air prints less than an hour ago. Did you say Seth Higgins? Yes, Mom. Well, land of Goshen. Who for? Well, Seth Higgins, you? Come on, dear. <laughs> If there's anything I can do to help you, get started in Sacramento. <laughs> no, that is nothing. Well, then, I guess there's nothing more to say, except that I'm giving up scouting. Yes? <laughs> With them two gone, it wouldn't be the same anyhow. I'm sorry. I'd be awful lonesome riding back east, thinking about them and you. <laughs> oh, but you will be free. I've been thinking that over. And I'd rather eat with a napkin around my neck for the rest of my life. Then uh, perhaps you will permit me to sell you some of my fine linen, huh? You've got it coming to you to have all the fun with me you want, but not now. I'm asking you a question, and the answer can't be maybe. It's got to be yes or no straight out. Understand? Will you marry me, yes or no? Oui, monsieur. Hmm? 